Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. So, it's a double upload day, things have already gone crazy, we have loads to cover, and we're not even a third of the way through the day, so make sure you guys are here later on tonight, where I'm sure there's going to be things happening and I will be here to tell you guys my thoughts. Um, video number two, where I will um, let that out sometime tonight maybe a little later than usual but it will be there so make sure you guys are there for that much appreciated let's get cracking right into the uh the meat and potatoes as we like to say starting with chelsea i think this is predominantly chelsea and we've got one little story at the end that is going to come from elsewhere but let's get cracking here's the latest starting with the athletic they've let us know a lot of information today here it is Sources within Chelsea say they want to spend more efficiently going forward. That not only suggests the budget could be smaller, but it could also be considered an admission that they have overpaid in the past. I don't think it's necessarily a case of be overpaying. Yes, we've spent a billion over three windows. And some people might say it's overpaying. But if we spent that money and got in quality, no one would be saying we overpaid. We overpaid because we didn't bring in what we had to bring in. That was underwhelming. So it's not the case of overpaying. It's overpaying for the quality that we got, that we got or the lack of quality that we got, yes. But the, the main issue here is the lack of quality that we brought in or the lack of experience or the over-experimentation on the players that we brought in. That's the problem. But here's one little thing from The Athletic that I want to show you guys and... Um, I think this is being spun. Check this out. Chelsea intend to be busy before June 30th. That is because they want a settled squad in place for the start of pre-season so Enzo Maresca knows what he is working with and can plan accordingly. You see, now everyone's going to agree with that. I agree with it. And I've said previously, even with Roman, that... Why can't we have a window like we did when we had Jose, if you remember, when we got in... Diego Costa, Fabregas, Felipe Luiz, all in place before preseason. We did not have to do any business after preseason started because we'd done all our business. That is the most ideal situation. So, at face value, I agree. But I don't think this is coming from face value. I think there's something hidden behind it. It says here that Chelsea intend to be busy before June 30th. Because we want to have a settled squad ready for Maresca to start preseason with. I don't think that's entirely true. Uh, the more that we see, day by day, I'm starting to feel like, yeah, you know what? The rumours were true and I feel like Chelsea have to sell before June 30th. I feel like we are trying to get business done and ready for June 30th because that's our deadline financially. I am honestly thinking that's the case. So, let's see. There's a big portion of this that I think is relating to the players that we have to let go of as compared to the players coming in. Players coming in can, can go on to the books of next season, not a problem. Or the books after June 30th, not a problem. But before that, that's what needs to be clarified. And that's where I think this brief, this brief is coming from. To try and make it look like, oh no, we just want to have Maresca settled, ready with the players that he's going to have for the next season before June 30th. Uh, I feel like it's a case of us having to sort out our financial situation before June 30th. So I feel like there's a message hidden in the sand there. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Now, talking about what we need, let's get into this because the striker market... The striker market is underwhelming, but we're limiting ourselves, I feel like. I feel like we're limiting ourselves. Let's get into the meat and potatoes, like I said. Here's the latest, and this is coming all from The Athletic, right? This is what they put out today. So here we are to start off with Victor Osimhen. Chelsea have ruled out Victor Osimhen due to fee, style of play, and injury history, right? So that's Victor Osimhen. Okay, I feel like we are ruling him out because of fee. End of story. I personally don't feel like it's because injury history, style of play. Listen, 
He's going to cost 105 million. He's got a release clause. That's the problem. End of story. We don't need to hear any other excuses. We all know it's because of that. If Victor Osterman was available for 60 million, you best believe we would probably be buying him. The same reason why we are linked with Sesco now, right? He costs less. And he, he's younger. I'll get to that later. But let's read more from The Athletic. Simon Johnson saying Chelsea like Elise, Eze, Nico Williams and have admiration for Evan Ferguson and Benjamin Sesco. Okay. Aside from Elise, right? Who you just know you're going to have to pay a bit of money for. 60 million or so. Not huge fee for a player of his level. But everyone else, what's the... What's the um, oh, well, even, even Elise here. But what's the common theme here? They're all young. All of them. So, I mean, someone like Evan Ferguson, 19. Sesco, 21, you know. This under-25 policy exists at Chelsea Football Club and it does not sit right with me. It doesn't. Some are going to say, oh, but we got Tosin, he's 26. He was for free. He's an exception to the rule because we're not having to pay money for him. So when people say, oh, no, we don't have an under-25 policy because we got Tosin, ha. Huh? No, it's there in relation to us spending money. We got more. Here it is. Brentford centre forward Ivan Tony, 28, does not fit Chelsea's striker profile. Of course he doesn't. He's over 25. This, Chelsea maintain an admiration for brighter youngster Evan Ferguson. Of course we do. He's 19 years old. Of course. Let's read more. Chelsea distanced themselves from links Victor Giocaris in January, and that remains the case. Of course. He's 28. <laughs> of course. Then do you get it now? Do you get it now? Gio Karras, right, is a player that previously on here at the start of the season, when we were linked with him, if you remember, I was saying he's not proven yet, right? I don't feel like he's played at the level that is he's not shown much at the level. He played as a championship striker. He barely broke through Brighton. He was playing as the under-23s there, and then he got sold by Brighton. Um, he, he, he's not performed at the top level. But now we have finished the season, I have to be honest, man. The numbers that he's put out in sporting for this past season is stupendous. 43 goals in 50 games is outrageous. So you have to at least pay some sort of attention to him. But no, hold the phone, hold the phone, hold the phone. He's 28. Sorry. Ah, is he 28? He's 28, right? He's 28. Or am I getting muddled up with someone else? He's, no, he's 26. He's 26. Sorry, he's 26. Girassi is 28. Girassi's another one. Stunning season this season that he's had. But he's 28. Sorry, we're not going for him. Gilcaris is 26. He's just gotten past the 25 age bracket. Sorry, we can't. Why? Because he's not going to cost cheap. You've got to be cheap and under 25. If you're not cheap and you're over 25, it's not happening. Gilcaris, we would probably have to fork out 70, 80 million for him. But we're going to be okay spending 50 or 60 on Sesco because he's 21. This doesn't sit right with me because as a striker, we need assurances that you're going to get goals. End of story. Gil Karras has had a banging season where he's raised eyebrows. Girassi in the Bundesliga has had a banging season, right? In the circumstances that his team has been in. Raised eyebrows. But... Nah, sorry. You're not going to fit the profile because you're over the age of 25. So are we limiting ourselves of the goals that we could have in the team because of an age? For me, I'm sorry, and I want to hear your thoughts. 26 is not old. 27 is not old. With a player of 26 or 27, you can still, especially with the way that modern science has evolved and the way that players last longer nowadays, you can still get five or six years out of that player and boy, you can get a good return. But 
We're looking for the financial incentives. We're looking for a player that we can bring in at age 21 and then we might even be able to sell once they hit 25. That's the problem. So are we looking for goals or are we looking for money? This is where it doesn't sit well with me. If there's one position on the pitch where I'm sorry, we cannot compromise with this sort of bracket, it's a striker. Do you get goals? When the ball's given to you, can you score? That's all I'm looking for. But that's not what we're looking for. So let me know your thoughts. Because I honestly think we're going to be paying attention to Sesco. Now, Sesco at 21, yes. Decent. I wouldn't say decent. I say average goal return so far. Average. He's scoring on average maybe one every two games. You've got strikers out there that have a higher output, but they're over 25 and they're going to cost more. So do we just stick with Jackson? This is a debate we've got to have now. Because I worry that if we're going to go for someone like Sesco, instead of um, you know, spending a little more on getting a striker that everyone can feel a bit more confident on, we might just be throwing 50 million out of the window. And then if he doesn't perform, we're going to say, oh, we wasted 50 million. Well, there was doubts from the get-go. This is something that we might not know until when he actually comes to Chelsea or if he does play and then we'll find out later. It's all hindsight. But with the striker position, I don't sit right with looking for hindsight. I need certainty. An assurance that I can look at and go, no, you know what? Yeah, he's going to kill it. More chance of him killing it than not. That's what we need to look for. Sesco right now, I'm sorry, for me, it's 50-50. It's 50-50. Much like everything at Chelsea Football Club, it's 50-50. You ask any question to the Chelsea fan base now, and I've done it three times, and my responses have always been 50-50. Every single time at 50-50. I even put out a poll earlier on on Twitter asking, who do you prefer, Gil Keras or Sesco? Guess what happened? 50-50. No one knows. No one knows. It's insane. So let me know your thoughts down below. We'll probably get a 50-50 comment section down below anyway. So... Let's move. Um, the latest now talking about Ian Matson. This has come from Sky Sports. Borussia Dortmund are in talks with Chelsea over the permanent signing of Ian Matson. Dortmund want to negotiate on price. Listen, Dortmund, if you want the player, pay the money. End of story. Pay the money. So, <laughs> I don't have anything else to say there. Pay the money. If he's that good and he has been that good, pay the money, right? If he's not... Send him back to Chelsea. And you know what? I feel like we can use an Ian Matson under Maresca. I feel like we actually could. So for me, it wouldn't be a case of just, oh yeah, just sell him. But we will, because pure profit. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to keep him. Let's see what happens. Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, Pochettino's released a statement just in the last few minutes. Here it is. So, class statement from Pochettino. I'm glad he went out on a positive note. This is from CFC Daily, but he put out this, uh, you could say, essay, right? Basically saying that he's happy with the way that the season went in the end and the improvement towards the end of the season, as well as wishing the players well, the club well, and the fans well, and that he hopes everyone has a good summer. And he's going to be there at the bridge for Soccer Aid this weekend, and he hopes that anyone that is going to the, going to the wanting to say goodbye or something can show up to the bridge and, and, and say their piece. So it'll be good to see a few of uh, you lot out there. That's what he said, by the way. So big hug from us, Maurizio Pochettino, is the way that he wrapped it. Fair play. Good statement. Um, personally, my opinion, I say thanks to Pochettino. Cheers. Um, it should have been much better, I'll be honest. Um, it was a decent end. It was. I personally felt like that there was possibly something to run with towards the end, but decisions have been made. Um, and overall, yeah, cheers. <laughs> and good luck I actually wish him the best I wish him um, all the best going forward and um, hope he can get a good next job and um, good luck to him and his team going forward that's all I have to say so yeah that's that now to wrap up we go back full circle Victor Osman. PSG have called interest in Napoli striker Victor Osman. that's from Lekeep now look they gotta be honest here this is where I feel like Napoli there, yes, there's a release clause, but this might be outpricing everybody. 105 million for a striker like Osimhen now is, in this financial climate, is not easy. 
who's going to be able to afford it? If Chelsea, Premier League clubs, are not looking at Osimhen for that price, no one will. That's just the reality. Because the budgets that other clubs have elsewhere across Europe are less than the Premier League teams. Let's be honest here. Premier League have money. And even then, we're limited. Whether it's FFP or UEFA FFP or just not a big budget. More times than not across Europe, it's not a big budget. So PSG might have to do something here. If you want to get rid of... Uh, sorry, not PSG. Uh, and look, PSG. If PSG are not willing to pay the money, no one will. So Napoli have to do something smart here. They're possibly looking to try and get Lukaku, 38 mil. Listen, um, Victor Osimhen, you're probably going to have to try and bring the price down. Yes, there's a release clause, but the discretion from the club can be, look, 90 mil, 85, right? It's better than nothing. And I feel like clubs might come in for that fee. So let's wait and see what happens. How much do you think Victor Osimhen is worth? Let me know in the comments, what fee would you be happy to pay for Victor Osimhen? Because that's something that's not really been asked. More people are asked about what they think of, Os of Osimhen as a player and what he brings and whatnot. Well, I'm asking, what do you think his value is? For what he has, what would you be happy paying for Victor Osimhen? Let me know down below. Much appreciated. And I will catch all of you later on for video number two. It's a double upload day. So I'll catch you later. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Do not forget to check out the socials on screen and in the description. And I'll catch all of you tonight for video number two. And we'll see what would happen from now up until then. So catch you a lot then. Have a good one. See you later. Take care and peace.